Hey YouTube, how's it going? This is Billy Eat World, and today I've got another sniping tips and tricks video for you. I was going to take a look at zeroing in this episode, but instead we're going to take a look at the barrel attachments on bolt action rifles. I found there's a lot of confusion among recon players in the community as to exactly what barrel attachments do to the bolt action rifles. So today we're going to do some experiments and I'm going to try to explain exactly what these attachments do. The only three barrel attachments available on bolt action sniper rifles are the suppressor, the muzzle brake and the flash hider. Now according to the stats for these attachments on Simphic.com, the suppressor as well as silencing a weapon will add a 20% penalty to hipfire spread and also drop the muzzle velocity to somewhere between 300 and 340 meters per second. An increase in hipfire spread probably won't make a huge difference to these weapons as you probably won't be hip firing anyway, but the lower muzzle velocity will definitely make it harder to hit moving targets and it'll also increase bullet drop. The muzzle brake will reduce upwards recoil by 25% and will increase ADS spread by 30% more per shot. As all of the bolt action rifles have an ADS spread of zero to begin with, a muzzle brake shouldn't affect the accuracy of these weapons at all, but I've heard it suggested by others in the community that this isn't the case. The flash hider reduces muzzle flash with no penalty, but realistically for a weapon that creates a huge vapour trail with every shot, and for a weapon that fires so slowly, this attachment really isn't going to matter much. So being that the flash hider isn't that useful on a bolt action rifle, the real question is what do muzzle brakes and suppressors actually do to these weapons? What we're going to do is we're going to run through a series of tests and try and figure this out. Before we start though, I'll just point out that except for the rapid fire test at the end, all of the shots being compared in this video were all taken from the same position and all aimed at the same point on the target exactly 200 meters away. Also, some of these shots will be using the zeroing function on the bolt action rifles, so if you haven't heard of this concept before or you don't quite understand how it works, all you need to know is that it's basically the process of angling your scope downwards to compensate for bullet drop. For example, if you take a shot at a target from 200 meters away, the shot will land considerably below where you aimed it. However, if you zero your weapon to the distance of 200 meters, the same shot would land exactly where you aimed in the center of the crosshairs. So this first shot is a control shot using the standard barrel and zeroed at 200 meters. We'll aim the next few shots where this one lands, which as you can see is exactly in the center of the crosshairs. The next shot will test to see if the muzzle brake causes any deviation in the shot. I took this shot from a standing position so the bipod wouldn't affect the accuracy and we could truly see if the muzzle brake causes any deviation at all. And as you can see, it also lands in the center of the crosshairs, so the muzzle brake doesn't seem to affect at least the first shot of the bolt action rifles. We're going to test the muzzle brake again, firing faster, later on in the video. The next shot is using the suppressor. The sight is still zeroed at 200 meters like the two shots before, and as you can see, it also lands exactly in the center of the crosshairs. The zeroing completely compensates for the drop of the bullet when you're taking the shot from the exact zeroed range. But as most of your shots are likely to be taken under 200 meters or at a range between the zeroing points, you'll notice the suppressor still causes a significantly greater bullet drop than the standard barrel. This is, like I explained before, because the suppressor just about halves the bullet velocity, which is an important factor in bullet drop. The next two shots show you the difference in bullet drop between shots using a standard barrel and shots using a suppressor. This time we're not zeroing the weapon, so the two shots are going to land in different spots. As you can see, the shot using a suppressor drops a lot farther than the shot using a standard barrel. This is the actual drop of the bullet. It's not that zeroing cancels the drop out completely, it's that you don't see it, because the sight itself is compensating for it. So let's check out those two shots side by side and see the difference in muzzle velocity. As you can see, the shot from the suppressed weapon is taking a lot longer to reach the target. Bear in mind though that bullet drop is not only affected by bullet velocity but also by the pull of gravity. So a weapon like the SRR61 which has a lower gravitational acceleration stat is still going to have a lower bullet drop than most of the other bolt action rifles, even when using a suppressor. Now I'll just add that even though I've demonstrated so far how bullet drop can be compensated for with zeroing, there's a bug currently in game involving zeroing while using a suppressor on an M98B. As you can see in this clip, the shot doesn't hit the center of the target as expected, but instead lands way above it. When not using zeroing however, shots from a suppressed M98B react as normal. So if you're shooting with a suppressed M98B and you're wondering why you're missing all your shots, for the time being, as a rule of thumb, don't use zeroing on this weapon when a suppressor is attached. The last test for today's video is to see how a muzzle brake affects a bolt action rifle firing as fast as possible. For this test, I used the Scout Elite, which has the fastest rate of fire in the class at 63 RPM. 
Even though this is still considerably slow, if any bolt action rifle is going to show a shot deviation when firing fast with a muzzle brake, the Scout Elite should show it best. As an added bonus to this test, I also tested the suppressor in the same situation. All the shots were taken at exactly 50 metres from the target. And as you can see, the groupings for all three barrel options are still relatively small. You could probably say that the grouping using the muzzle brake is slightly bigger, but it's not really that much of a difference at that range. And realistically, you're not going to be firing your weapon that fast at targets over 50 metres. The bolt action rifles don't really have a lot of recoil to begin with anyway, so the muzzle brake isn't really giving you much of a bonus, but it's also not really adding a penalty at all either. So what barrel attachment should you be using with a bolt action sniper rifle? Well that really depends on your play style, but I think we've shown today that there really is no reason not to use the muzzle brake, especially if you're sniping at long range. It might not affect your recoil that much, but when you're using a high magnification scope, your scope's going to jump around a lot more anyway, so anything you can do to stop that scope jumping around is a good thing. There really isn't any reason not to use the flash hider either, but like I said before, there really isn't any reason to use it at all. It's definitely not going to make you less visible. Bolt actions make a lot of noise, the high magnification scopes have a lot of glint, and each shot is going to make a vapor trail that is going to show anyone who's looking in your general direction where you are. The suppressor is the barrel attachment that has the most effect on bolt action rifles. It's going to keep you off the minimap, which is a great thing when you're sniping, but it also makes it almost impossible to hit long range targets. I'd only recommend this after you've had a lot of experience judging the bullet drop for your weapon, or if you just want to run around with a bolt action rifle for fun in CQB. So anyway, I hope this helps you to understand exactly what the barrel attachments are doing to your rifle, and I hope this clears up some of the confusion in the community. So anyway guys, thanks for watching, and if you like what you see, as always, please like, comment, and subscribe. In the next episode of my Sniper Guide series, we're going to take a detailed look at Zero Wing, and I'm going to show you how it works in-game. So until then, please take a look at my other Battlefield 4 videos. I'll have a lot of brand new stuff up in the next week or so. So until next time guys, stay tuned and have a good one.